what's up y'all so welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing for weekly automotive mechanical content for the average shade tree mechanic back at it again just came back from uh, holidays uh, we ended up driving to Texas and if you don't know uh, I live here in North Carolina and so over the course of two weeks I was able to put on about 3,800 miles I'll just go ahead and round it up to 4,000 due to whatever miscellaneous. Um, so what I wanted to do is actually just give an update, uh, miles per gallon update, because I know this is a big topic. Even though I may not get a lot of comments on miles per gallon, I know there are a lot of people interested about the miles per gallon topic for these trucks, especially once you start to put bigger wheels and tires on the truck. Now I've got a lot of messages uh, and they're they're specifically asking, you know, oh, what is your miles per gallon now that you have bigger tires, wheels, or what's your miles per gallon? What, what are you getting on the average day? And so this is what this video is going to be about, uh, just a miles per gallon update for 4,000 miles driving to Texas and back. Now keep in mind that when I installed my tires and wheels, I did not have them calibrated at first. I didn't calibrate my speedometer uh, odometer on the way to Texas. It wasn't until I arrived to Texas that I shipped an AEV Procal to Texas so that I can actually calibrate it once I get there, once I got there. So uh, due to shipping reasons, I just ended up shipping it there instead of here in North Carolina because I know I'd probably miss the shipping uh, delivery date if I would have shipped it here in North Carolina. So what I have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine Phillips that I'm about to go over. Uh, again, I used my Fuelie app and uh, double checked it, hand calculating uh, pretty much what Fuelie does, uh, just to give me peace of mind. Now I'm also going to give an update or review on the tires and wheels driving with those new things um, for the course of the 4,000 miles. I didn't want to do it before taking off because I don't like doing reviews, updates over a course of 100 miles, 200 miles. It just doesn't ser serve the purpose. Um, I like some credibility in my reviews. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it first with the Phillips. So December 15th, and they're all between December 15th and the 31st. So the 15th uh, filled up 16.7. Um, this was with arch oil and it was also uncalibrated. Same instance on the 16th, filled up again 16.3 miles per gallon. Uh, the 16th again, 18.1. Um, this was not using any arch oil, nor was it calibrated still. So, on the December 22nd, this is uh, midway through the tank. I calibrated with the AEV Procal. Also added arch oil, I got 14.5 miles per gallon, a little more city. Uh, once I got to San Antonio. On the 26th of December, 15 miles per gallon. Uh, this was with arch oil added and it was a full tank of calibrated um, speedometer and odometer. December 29th, 15.5. I ended up running out of arch oil and picking up some Stanodyne. I actually used this. All right, uh, now you can probably see it. Diesel fuel additive, Stanodyne. Never um, heard of heard of it but I picked it off of uh, Walmart shelf and so I just wanted to try it I just I mean if y'all know me I'm just trying a bunch of different products to see which one's the best which one I can get my uh, you know the best bang for the buck and let y'all know about them so I tried standard dine that one was 15.5 for the December 29th fill up so December 30th before taking off um, filled up and that was 16.4 that was with the Stanodyne fuel additive um, side note filled up my def tank for the first time at a truck stop that was pretty cool and very cheap no issues right, so good. December 31st this one was 16.9 miles per gallon with also uh, Stanodyne fuel additive um, added to the fuel so December 31st and this is the day um, well this is I filled up twice on this day so the second fill up I really experimented with the speeds. Really on the way there, um, driving in town in Texas, really wasn't worried too much. I mean, I beat up on it. Um, I was going 75, sometimes 80, uh, but more so I was averaging around 70 miles per hour. Coming back on the second fill up, um, I experimented a little bit more. 
total was 18.4 miles per gallon. Um, I had a regen towards the very end, thanks to my scan gauge, letting me know when I'm actually in regeneration. Um, and this tank actually did not throw any fuel additive. So, um, at the beginning of the tank, I wanted to see what was my what would be my fuel economy uh, from what the EVIC told me on the computer and hand calculating um, towards the very end, averaging out. I'll, I'll get into the specifics anyways. Um, so 200 miles, I, I drove 70 miles per hour. It was, uh, it was calibrated already. So it's a true 70 GPS confirmed with no fuel additive. There was no region. Um, 70 miles per hour for 200 miles. The EVIC, EVIC told me 20 miles per gallon flat. The second 200 miles that I drove after that, I, I just bumped it down to 65 miles per hour and the EVIC told me I was 22.1 miles per gallon. That is a 2.1 miles per gallon difference driving 65 instead of 70. All right, so the way I really, and this is, this is not really a hard, you know, this is what I got, but going off of the total amount of miles um, that I drove on this tank divided or and, and also taken in, into effect um, what the EVIC told me and I will go ahead and pull it up one second okay got it so it was a total of 510 miles the EVIC or the computer told me 21.3 miles per gallon and using that 21.3 what I really got was 18.4 that is a difference of 2.9 all right so using what the computer told me when I was driving 70 miles per hour which was 20.0 I subtracted 20 or 2.9 that gave me 17.1 miles per gallon so this is what I'm roughly getting uh, going 70 miles per hour using the um, how how much more the computer was telling me compared to hand calculated uh, once I filled up. So for 65 miles per hour, for 200 miles, computer told me 22.1. I subtracted 2.9 from that, and it's giving me around 19.2 miles per gallon. So that's, I mean, it may fluctuate point, uh, point 0.2, um, you know, up or down, but, you know, even if it was down point 0.2, which means that I would be subtracting 3.1 from the entire formula, uh, that would put me at 19 miles per gallon. So 19 miles per gallon, 19.2, if I want to be exact, going off of a 2.9 subtract um, is really good. The thing is, is that I didn't have any fuel additive. Um, it was it was running, it was raining here and there. Um, and with all my mods, 19 miles per gallon with 35 uh, needle ridge grapplers and new wheels it, uh, which amounts to about I think it's 113 pounds per wheel um, compared to 71 75 with the stock chrome clad and the firestone HTs that's a, a significant weight difference but you can't really complain with 19 miles per gallon now the highest tank the highest miles per gallon I've ever had on a tank was 21.8 or maybe 22 22.4 all right, so I'm almost there. Um, obviously, you know what's going to happen when you upgrade your tires and wheels. They're just a heavier, uh, heavier package. The tread pattern, uh, also your alignment could actually be affected too, putting more pressure or just not not allowing the truck to drive as efficient as possible, as flat as possible with a good footprint on the road. So there are a lot of variables, but one thing I did wanted to mention, and this is something I'm going to test, is that maybe these fuel additives are actually impairing my fuel economy. I've noticed every time I did not throw a fuel additive into my tank, um, I always was like, wow, how am I still getting um, you know, that fuel economy, that miles per gallon with no fuel additive? I, I'm thinking these fuel additives are supposed to help you or help the, you know, the, the diesel burn cleaner longer I just lubricate everything causing just a little more efficient drive I really don't change the way I drive and I know there's a lot of variables but maybe these fuel additives are impairing my miles per gallon 
So. I will dive into that in the future, not now, um, but that's just a side note. All right, now for a review of the tires and wheels, now that I have 4,500 miles on them, um, I can give you a little more insight. I already mentioned they're, they weigh about 113 per package compared to the stock 20 or 71 or 75 pounds um, of the stock wheel. Um, and that's that's a wheel and a tire combined, you know, 71 to 75 pounds. I forgot which what it was. All right, so for the tires, the Ridge Grapplers, I'm pretty happy with the way they performed in the rain. We were, shit, we were hammered um, for a portion of maybe two hours on the road. I was driving 70, it was just no big deal. I felt more control compared to the Firestone HTs. They gripped a whole lot better, um, just the way you know, the steering wheel handled and everything like that. Uh, so they are a plusher ride, and this is one of the reasons why I went 18s instead of 20s. You get a little more sidewall, and with a little more sidewall, um, it's able to flex a little more in your favor when there's bumps, you know, potholes, whatever. Um, they just help trying to cushion, essentially just help the suspension a little more uh, for a softer ride. Another good thing, they look badass. Cons of the tires and wheels. So they're a little difficult to clean. I wanted to keep this in mind while shopping for wheels, knowing that I'm gonna have to really get in there and um, clean all the little holes um, that the wheel has. Luckily, I tried some wheel cleaner and with the ceramic coating, all I have to do is shoot some wheel cleaner, tire and wheel cleaner on the wheel and actually use a prep power washer or pressure washer um, and everything just all the brake dust all the dirt just flies right off so that's that's the benefit of ceramic coating the wheels it's just a whole lot easier to clean them um, so that I don't have to get in there and use a brush um, or a pad to actually clean the wheels and all those small circles and you know openings that the wheel has so yeah it's a little more difficult to clean um, but the ceramic coating does help so needing to recalibrate um, driving 70 miles per hour, the GPS told me I was actually driving 73 miles per hour. I was a little too crazy for me, so I wanted to recalibrate, and this is why I went the AEV ProCal route. Um, so once I took care of that, I was good to go, although uh, it is an additional roughly, what was it, $160, $200 investment. And I'll post the link down below. So impaired braking. Um, everyone usually notices this when you upgrade your wheels and tires. Just it's just heavier, there's more rolling resistance, obviously. Um, so it's a little difficult to break. If you use your exhaust brake, that's, I mean, we, the Cummins has one of the strongest, if not the strongest exhaust brake out of the three Chevy and Ford. Um, so that helps, but if you don't, if you're not used to using your exhaust brake all the time, I don't use my exhaust brake all the time. Um, it, it slows down just a little bit slower. It, it still bites. You just got to give it a little more break. It's just something you got to get used to. It's not really a con. It's just like, okay, you just got to press a little harder on the brake pedal. Um, but that's what they mean when you say your braking is going to suck a little more. I mean, if, you, if you're forced to slam on your brakes, yeah, I'm sure um, that'll have a negative impact with the amount of distance it takes for you to stop. Um, but for daily driving, yeah, you're going to have to press your brake pedal a little bit more. Um, so that is all I have um, that is all my notes. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and let me know below. Also, I'm searching for other fuel additives. I've tried Arch Oil. I've tried Diesel Clean, the Gray. I've tried Stanodyne. I still have this bottle to go through. Um, and I recently just picked up some diesel fuel, the white bottle. This is the winner. This is the really the winner. Um, the winter variant for diesel clean to winterizer anti-gel prevents fuel gelling and protects against fuel filter icing doesn't get that cold here to really like go crazy about winterizer and anti-gel here in north carolina but it does get it will get cold and i'm talking maybe maybe single digits um or you know between the 10s 20s 20s 30s obviously um but just something to prevent um a bad situation until next time ciao Perfect!